Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru and just one day after the launch of NVIDIA's RTX 3080 Founders Edition, we are back with one of our first looks at a custom card from the board partners. In this video we are looking at Gigabyte's RTX 3080 Eagle. Just a quick recap for those of you who haven't seen the news, Eagle is a new product series from Gigabyte and it is replacing the older Windforce family. So I think this RTX 3080 Eagle is a particularly interesting card to look at just one day after the launch as it is actually an MSRP card. So it comes in at £649 here in the UK. With a triple fan cooler and a rated boost clock of 1755MHz, which is actually 45MHz faster than the Founders Edition, on paper it certainly looks up to the task. But in this video we'll find out just how good it is and whether or not you should buy one. We'll kick things off with a look at the design then, and here the Eagle is definitely pretty low key. It uses an almost entirely grey plastic shroud, though we can see some sort of translucent sections just above the fans on the underside of the card, which is home to the Eagle name. I do like the fact that it is a grey shroud as it is still very colour neutral, but it does just make a nice change from the all black designs that we are used to seeing. As for the size of the card now, it is safe to say this is not small. It actually measures in at 32 by 13 by 5.5 centimeters. So we definitely do recommend always checking that a card is going to fit in your case before buying. And I think these bigger 3080s is definitely going to be a trend as Nvidia's board partners have definitely had to come up with, you know, some solution to dealing with the increased power. And for most of them, that just means bigger cards with bigger heat sinks. Speaking of size, we can also note the dimensions of those three fans. Here, the fan closest to the IO bracket is actually slightly smaller than the other two. It measures in at 80 millimeters across, while the others are 90 millimeters. Gigabyte is also using its reverse fan technology here, so the central fan actually spins in reverse relative to the outer two fans, and this should reduce overall airflow turbulence thus increasing pressure down onto the heatsink itself. The Eagle does also feature a full length metal backplate as we would expect from a 3080, but we can see there's actually a relatively large cutout towards the end of the card, and this should allow just for a more direct airflow path straight through the heatsink. Personally, I'm not too convinced about all the branding that's been printed on here. We can see the Eagle, the Gigabyte, and the GeForce RTX brand names printed on the backplate, which personally is a little bit much for me, but then again, it is hardly a major concern. Other things to note just before moving on include the two 8-pin power connectors, so thankfully no 12-pin here, and we can also see display outputs consist of three DisplayPort 1.4a and then two HDMI 2.1 ports. Moving on to disassembly then, once we got the heatsink off, we can take a look at the PCB, and here it seems that Gigabyte has gone for a slightly customised design. In total, there are 17 power stages, though we couldn't tell you exactly how these are split between the GPU and the memory. The memory though is of course 19 gigabit per second GDDR6X from Micron, and these are labelled D8BGW. We can also see a thick wadge of cables towards the end of the card, and this is because Gigabyte is actually using an extension for those 8-pin power connectors. So they've actually moved them further down the length of the card than if they were directly attached to the PCB itself. So hopefully this should just make that cable management a little bit easier. As for the cooler then, this uses two separate fin stacks and these are connected by a total of seven 6mm copper heat pipes. We can also see that the GPU and VRAM makes contact with a copper coal plate, while there are also plenty of smaller plates for the VRM and MOSFETs. So then, that is really it for our look at the card itself, but how does it perform? To test it, we used our custom-built system from PC Specialist, which features an overclocked Intel i9-10900K running at 5.1 GHz on all cores. This is paired with an Asus ROG Maximus 12 Hero motherboard and 32GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 memory running at 3600MHz. Starting first then with a look at thermal performance, 
I honestly wasn't too sure what to expect here from the Eagle. Firstly, because it is an MSRP card, and also because the NVIDIA Founders Edition changed its own design so radically when compared with the previous generation. Thankfully, I was pleasantly surprised to see GPU temperatures hovering between 66 and 67 Celsius during our 30 minute 3D Mark stress test. This is a very impressive result, and while we will need to test more custom cars to see how it compares against a wider group, a sub 70 degree peak temperature is always going to be what we want to see, so it is definitely a thumbs up to the Eagle in this department. Thermal performance then is very solid, but does that come at the cost of noise levels? Thankfully, the answer to that question is no, as we measured noise output coming in at 40 decibels from a distance of 30 centimeters, and that was with the fan spinning at around 1680 RPM when under full load. Now, this is marginally louder than the Founders Edition, and undoubtedly we will see some other cards come in quieter, such as the MSI Gaming X Trio. However, it is still by no means a loud graphics card, as the GPU's fans would only be barely noticeable over the noise of your system fan. So again, I really can't complain here, and it is hardly any louder than the Founders Edition. Next up, we come to Total System Power Draw, and this is a little bit higher than the Founders Edition, with our whole system pulling about 475 watts at the wall. Digging deeper, we can see that this is because the Eagle has a 340 watt power target, compared to 320 watts for the Founders card. We can also see GPU-Z reports average GPU-only power consumption at 338 watts, across the duration of our 3D Mark stress test. So again, exactly 20 watts higher than the Founders Edition. Undoubtedly, part of this extra power headroom has gone towards pushing GPU clock speeds with a rated boost clock of 1755 MHz, which is a 45 MHz increase over Nvidia's own design. We actually saw the Eagle running as fast as 1980 MHz towards the beginning of our stress test, but averaged across the entire 30 minute run the GPU's clock speed came in at 1913 MHz, which is still almost 60 MHz faster than the Founders card. As for how this increased clock speed translates into the real world, we will now move on to our game benchmarks. Here we're only going to be looking at a few select titles at 4K, as we already know the general performance of the RTX 3080. However, if you are interested in our 1080p and 1440p charts, you can find those over on the written article on kitguru.net. Starting with Control then, this is actually a very tough game to run at maximum settings, and it's one of the few where the RTX 3080 can't average above 60 frames per second at 4K. Instead, the Eagle hits 53 frames per second on average, which is a single frame above the Founders Edition, working out as a 2% increase. Thankfully, Death Stranding is much easier to run, with the RTX 3080 hitting 103 FPS on average when tested at 4K. This is still only two frames per second faster than the Founders Edition though, which works out as another 2% boost to performance. We do see things pick up a little bit in Gears 5, but only marginally. Here the Eagle hits 77 frames per second on average, bringing a 3% increase versus Nvidia's Founders card. This also works out as a 38% improvement over the RTX 2080 Ti. We'll add in just a couple more games as by now we have pretty much got the picture. So looking at Red Dead Redemption 2, here we see another 2% gain over Nvidia's 3080 founders, with the Eagle averaging 86 frames per second at high settings. Finally, Total War Saga Troy is pretty much a worst case scenario for the Eagle, as we see performance is a dead heat between Gigabytes and Nvidia's solutions. It would seem that this game simply doesn't scale that well with increases to GPU clock speed. All told then, it's probably not going to be a surprise to hear that, on average across all the games we tested at 4K, the Gigabyte RTX 3080 Eagle is 2% faster than Nvidia's Founders Edition. This really isn't much at all, but it does seem to be the way that custom cards are going. Cards from the 20 series for instance were hardly any faster than Nvidia's own Founders Editions then, and that is certainly the case here with the 3080 Eagle. Just to see if we could improve things further, we turn to manual overclocking. 
It does appear that adjusting the GPU frequency of the 3080 as a whole is pretty limited. Our Founders Edition card could only go with an extra 60 megahertz, while our Eagle could only manage an extra 40 megahertz. The memory does scale slightly better though, and our best overclock with the Eagle came with a 750 megahertz memory offset. This overclock didn't really do much for the games we retested as we saw increases to our frame rates coming in between 3 to 4% when testing at 4K. It would appear that Ampere has been pretty much delivered on the edge of what we can expect from these GPUs, so there does appear to be very limited overclocking headroom. Wrapping up this video then, I have to say I'm actually really impressed with what Gigabyte has done with its RTX 3080 Eagle. Considering it is an MSRP card coming in at £649 here in the UK, I can't really find any real flaws with it. It is slightly louder than Nvidia's Founders Edition, but balanced against that it is also faster and runs cooler, so again, we can't really complain. That for me makes this a very easy recommendation. The Eagle may not blow your socks off with any crazy features or vast improvements over Nvidia's own design, but it's not trying to do that. It's simply trying to be a solid card doing the fundamentals well that comes in at the same price as MSRP, so you're not paying a price premium for this model. With that in mind, it is an easy recommendation. It's definitely a thumbs up from me to Gigabyte. If you're looking for this type of card, I would definitely urge you to look at the Eagle, but we will, of course, have more 3080 reviews coming very soon. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Do leave me a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on the Eagle itself. And while you're there, why not hit the subscribe button and poke that notification bell. You can also check out a link to our Discord server down in the description. And while you're there, why not check out some of our merch, which you can find over on Teespring. Lastly, if you want to back us over on Patreon, guys, that would be really appreciated. And you get some extra perks, such as seeing some of our content early and access to some exclusive giveaways. Until then though guys, I've been Dominic for Kit Guru and I'll see you in the next video.